All right, guys, I'm Eric, and this is my good friend, Andy. Hey. He owns this Hawkeye right here. I think the cleanest, most legit build there is. And um, I known him because I used to own a Subaru and we met at a walnut car meet hosted by my friend. And ever since then, we kind of hung out. What, how did this come about? How did you get it and what made you get it? Um, so uh, in high school, I was uh, really, really interested in uh, WRC because I'd watch all these videos of the Road Rally Championship. Uh, and I would see that uh, I, I would just be in love with the GD chassis Subaru. Uh, the Bug Eye, Blob Eye, and Hawkeye sliding through corners in sleet, snow, rain, dirt, gravel, everything. Um, and it was such a glorious car. Uh, it, it performed so well. It looks so cool. Uh, and I knew I just fell in love with that car and wanted to pick up the GD chassis. Um, I also, there were some people uh, that were at my school that had that chassis. Wow. Yeah, and I actually, I, I saw, I would see a WRX at school uh, that really influenced me, really wanted to get the car. Be a nice school. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was. It was uh, not a good school. It was right oh, nearby. Wow. Um, what? But uh, there's also people that would drive by our school. Like I'd be in class or walking between classes, and I would see this super sexy uh, WRB, World Rally Blue Blah by STI pass by, yeah. and it was so loud. And that Boxer Rumble just. Uh, it was just eargasm, right? And right. as a as a kid back then, I was just like, oh my god, I, it sounds so good. I have to have that sound. Um, then I learned more about the car and I realized it was actually a really amazingly performing car. Mm -hmm. All-wheel drive, turbo, uh, you know, very stiff chassis, so uh, very safe. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, then I started to look for uh, this chassis and at that time, uh, it was at the end of the GD chassis. Uh, the okay. uh, hatches were coming in at that time. Right. So then I, um, I was looking for a white one. Uh, I couldn't find one and I ended up settling with a black one, which ended up working out a lot for the arrow that, that, it, that it has right now. It's um, brand new at the lot? Or? Uh, yeah, so okay. uh, I got this car uh, brand new off the lot. So I'm the first wow. original owner of this car and I've had Crazy. it for uh, 14 or 15 years. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm the first original owner. Uh, it didn't have zero miles because okay. I guess this was the, like the dealer, I guess, car that people would just test drive, right? So right. it had a few, you know, like a hundred some miles on it. And wow. I, I even test drove it when I didn't really know how to drive manual at that time. <laughs> uh, and also learned manual myself on this car, so. I'm surprised a dealer let a high school kid dr test drive this car. Yeah, <laughs> I, they're, they're trying to push the, uh, that chassis off the lot, because uh, oh, okay. at that time the hatchback was such a huge okay. deal, right? Um, so they got a lot of hatchbacks in. Uh, it totally uh, evolutionized, you know, the Subaru lineup, and uh, I think they're just trying to move this car off the lot. So that's why I got a really, really good deal on it. Uh, nice. It's actually really, really cheap, even cheaper than uh, s new Civic SIs of that time. Those were still a few grand, uh, a lot more grand, <laughs> more than what this was. That's really shocking, actually. Yeah. So we'll start from the front. So obviously none of this in the front is like pretty much stock other than the headlights and the fender. Uh, well, even the headlights were uh, baked and open to okay. have the housing painted um, gotcha. so it can blend in with the car more. Uh, so the kit, the aero kit on this car is kind of the, one of the biggest deals of this car to me. I have the uh, uh, Zero Sports, authentic, authentic Zero Sports front bumper, uh, rear bumper, authentic uh, Voltec side skirts, and uh, rear diffuser. Uh, this bumper looks really crazy because it was made for a, uh, uh, it was made for the actual Zero Sports Tom Attack race car, and that car had a, a V mount uh, in the front, so uh, it has a massive opening for that V mount. Of course, I don't have a V mount. Uh, it'd be cool to have one, maybe one day. Um, but uh, this theme was basically a Sukuba JDM. Uh, inspired Tom Attack race build. Uh, I adored the uh, blue WRB Blue Zero Sports GDB, uh, and uh, as well as the uh, there's another kind of like a light blue uh, Tomei Cusco Voltex GDB Hawkeye. Uh, those two cars inspired this car, and I've uh, basically built them this car off of those. Um, that's why it's running their aero, their parts, um, and it's really uh, I'm very happy with uh, the aero setup now. So uh, Andy told me before that pretty much whenever something goes wrong, he uses that opportunity to upgrade the car. So he actually has another bumper at home, or two bumpers. He also has a Voltex bumper at, at home as well. And when he had that, <laughs> that thing was like so low to the floor. It, I don't know how he drove that. All right, so which car, which, uh, which hood is this one? Uh, that's actually a Sabon hood. Um, okay. Saban carbon hood, and then I put the uh, arrow cat. I installed the arrow catches, which was a huge pain in the ass because I, I wanted them in line with the vents and symmetrical. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is not an ideal spot for them, um, so I had to 
kind of Make fab it, it a certain way. Uh, it was like an eight hour install because of that. Um, but I have a, them accented with the TI bits. I was uh, about to ask about that. <laughs> yeah, I really love these bits. These are uh, titanium treated uh, hardware for it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I love the touch it gives it. Which, where, where is that from? Or is there a brand for that? Yeah, it's uh, the West Coast Fasteners. Okay. Oh, and in the front, you can see the, the Cusco chassis braces. Yeah, right here, I, right I like or that you can already the... see the, uh, all the uh, blue Cusco bits. Um, that's the Cusco front power brace, the Cusco uh, front radiator um, cooling plate. Uh, and this is actually a, a Zero Sports um, duct. So uh, because this is a, you know, this is a very large hood scoop, uh, and this is the USDM STI GDB top mount intercooler, mm -hmm. uh, I just actually acquired that Zero Sports duct in order to duct the air onto the full volume, a uh, full area, surface area of that, uh, the Tom Iner cooler. Um, and I actually have a, it's made for the GR uh, top mount, so uh, I plan to swap that onto the car. So going back to how I was saying the car was extremely low, I always wondered how do people drive like that? So when I asked Andy, he had a really funny story to tell me. Um, so uh, with this car, so I daily this car, I owned it for 14, 15 years, but I dailyed it for actually uh, 12 or 13 years straight before I acquired a beater van uh, to daily. So um, yeah, you know, I would be driving it everywhere to go to the gym, buy groceries, to uh, I work in the legal field, so then I'd go to courthouses wearing a suit in this car, <laughs> uh, in random areas, uh, different firms. Um, and the thing is, you know, I would always have to go Google addresses, street view it, so I could look at the, uh, visually look at the entrance to see how wide it was, to see if I had room to angle. Uh, thing is, that, that was also very difficult because, you know, with the, it's still a 2D picture that you're looking at, and you can't get uh, a good perception of how uh, slanted that entrance actually is. So, um, you know, that actually kind of still hurt and uh, I still showed up to places that I, I couldn't make it in and that was a whole pain in the ass. Uh, but I try my best. I try to research, I try to look at, look, uh, plan my route in advance, uh, find the best way, uh, everything I can to ensure that this car and the rare arrow on it does not get uh, destroyed. Um, I, I guess I didn't mention because uh, the Zero Sports kit on the car is discontinued now. Um, so uh, it's a JDM kit that's discontinued. Uh, they don't make it anymore, they won't make it anymore because uh, Zero Sports now is quite a different company from what it was before uh, during the GD chassis era. When I'm driving around in this car, it, I have a, I'm driving with a historical artifact uh, on my car, front and rear. And if I was in a car accident, if somebody hit me or if I messed it up, uh, I could never replace it. And uh, fiberglass is also a huge bitch to uh, work with um, and to repair. All right, so we're going to talk about the wheels. You want to explain? How it ended up here and what are your previous sets? Uh, yeah, so uh, to be honest, I actually had uh, multiple sets of reps when I was in high school uh, and even after high school. Um, so, you know, obviously on the uh, high school budget, early college budget, uh, you know. Yeah, he wasn't always legit. Yeah, not knowing any better, you know, uh, I, I, got, I had reps. So then I, under, I learned and I saved and I understood uh, the value in having uh, quality wheels uh, that are so much lighter, so much stronger. Um, so I'm getting my first set of wheels were uh, silver 18 by eight and a half plus 48 Avan RS wheels. Uh, I love those wheels. Um, I was just unhappy that they weren't uh, the GTR face spec because of whack ass five by 100. Uh, so I then coated them uh, gold. Uh, I ran that for a long time. Um, then they actually uh, suffered a fatigue crack. Actually, I think it was due to the powder coating, and wow. I was tracking the car wow. at that time. So. Because of that, I guess that was a blessing in disguise because I uh, then uh, used that opportunity to upgrade to T37s and 18 by 9.5 plus 40. Uh, so that was my first aggressive spec wheel setup on this chassis. And what color was that, were those? Those were uh, diamond black. Okay. So uh, my friend, uh, I really wanted mag blue and my friend uh, was able to get those before me. So I kind of got left with diamond black. Um, I, I liked that setup. I, looked, I liked how it looked, uh, the black on black look. Uh, I got to experience that. Uh, won't do that again, um, <laughs> but I enjoyed that, uh, but it, that forced me to run much more aggressive tires. I, I then went from 235-40-18 to 255-35-18 uh, for a lot more meat, uh, and I went through a shit ton of work to fit them on this chassis. Uh, because of that setup, I raised the car a lot uh, in order for me to not be uh, rubbing uh, and also to still be functional and have a maximum grip uh, and travel. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I guess not a lot of, not maximum travel because the car is as low as it can be, 
but uh, again, I wanted to have no rub uh, as low as it can be and still be functional. Mm -hmm. So uh, after that, I had a, I've also had 18 by 9 plus 40 uh, SPC NTO3s, uh, same spec Advan Chrome RGD2s, uh, and I, I think lastly, yeah, I'm not skipping any wheels. So then lastly would just be uh, <laughs> this uh, gold set of T37s uh, SL. Um, and uh, this is the same spec. So I make a point to have all my wheels and tires to be this exact same spec because uh, I want to be able to just swap them on and off the car like shoes uh, without refitting the car. Because, you know, again, fitment work is uh, very time consuming uh, and I don't have time for that now. I want to just be able to swap them onto the car and then completely change the look of the car uh, until I get tired of that and want to swap again. Do you do, when you change the wheels, do you always keep the same lug nuts or do you also change those to fit the color of the wheel you're rocking? Uh, so I actually have, uh, uh, I have uh, the chrome, uh, black chrome R40s, but those are for the E46. Uh, for this okay. car, I only have the neochrome. Uh, okay. I think that just accents uh, the JDM theme of this car uh, mm -hmm. the best. Uh, and uh, when, when I have this on the chrome Advans or the chrome NT03s, you know, it just looks super nice. bling with all this color everywhere being mirrored everywhere and it looks pretty cool. <laughs> cool. And then what kind of side mirrors are these? Uh, these are actually really rare, uh, well, I, not rare, but I guess very sought after Ganadors. Uh, I say that because I was searching for them forever. Um, these are the carbon versions of these Ganadors. Uh, mm -hmm. They're from Japan. They have, uh, I guess, their own build to them because, you know, the, as everybody who has them knows, the visibility is shit with these because they're intended for right-hand drive vehicles in Japan. So uh, I got in on a group buy, so I have these blue convex Prova mirrors. Uh, to, get, to aid in visibility. I have uh, these Airwolf uh, attachments just for styling and for aero. Um, and I also have on the right side, I have, uh, there's a guy named Joe Tobias who does amazing work creating custom parts for this chassis. And uh, he 3D printed the spacers, inserts that insert into that side and allow the mirror to angle towards you and uh, resolve that, that problem where you can't see shit with that side. So I'm very, very, very happy to have uh, basically uh, USDM, OEM, and better visibility from these JDM Gandors. Do these actually, are these more for decoration or does it actually help shade your mirror so it helps you look or anything? Uh, you know, to be honest there, I think they're a styling arrow okay. piece. Um, okay. But you know, I like to say and think that perhaps they <laughs> yeah, decrease drag. They, like you said, it, it shades it so you can see better, <laughs> right? Uh, Anti-glare effect, right? Maybe when it's raining, the, mm -hmm. the rain wouldn't get on the glass. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd like to say they're functional and form. <laughs> Everything functional on his car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so as I was mentioning, he has Voltex on his car. This is the side skirt. So did you get this everything together, right, with their Voltex kit? Uh, no, I uh, actually or... acquired these sizes from a guy that I kind of was messaging and begging to sell to me. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, he, I think he just got tired of uh, me asking him uh, incessantly he... to sell me these, and he finally just sold it okay, to me man. for the deal that I, uh, uh, what I was asking for. He gave me a good okay. deal. I really appreciate that. Nice. <laughs> and uh, nice. yeah, I was very happy to have these on the car. I actually have a, a Zero Sport side skirts as well. I have... Uh, Zero sport side skirts that are also as large, um, but they're a lot more simple and clean looking. Mm -hmm. I, I, I chose to run the Voltex side skirts with the Zero Sports kit because I wanted to, because um, the, the Zero Sports kit is so aggressive and the uh, Zero Sports skirts are very clean. As, yeah. So I don't think it uh, suited the build as well. Um, also, I liked that it had a functional vent, uh, venting out for aero. Yeah, it complements the OE piece you have right here. I don't think many people rock this, right? All right, that's a good point. Um, yeah, like I, I love this piece on the doors. Uh, it's a two-piece STI OEM, I guess, catalog part. Um, and I, I, I guess they call it a door canard. But I love that it, the canards actually are parallel with this vent line. Um, so a lot of people think that it's the same kit, but it's not. Um, I love that <laughs> it accentuates the front canard on the Zero Sports kit. Uh, that also has a similar line. So mm -hmm. when you're looking at the sure. car from a rear or front quarter panel angle, you oh, can see it flowing. Uh, have, you, have you seen anyone else with those? Because I don't know if I've ever seen that on a, another car. I have, to be honest, I have not in person. I've okay, seen them uh, on IG online, but uh, I actually have never seen them in person. Um, I, I love having them. Um, and it's just something that uh, is really subtle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people don't even I'll notice them on my car, but... Uh, for me, whenever I look at my car, it's one of the first things I see because okay. nobody has, you know, canards that are OEM on a door. 
And what is this piece right here? Uh, so this is a, yeah, this is an OEM STI piece. Uh, I got this because uh, I got the Zero Sports STI rear bumper, and that, of course, was made for the GDB STI. Uh, this is a WRX. Uh, so I had to get that to insert into this right here and continue the flare. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's cool because this is a very, very aggressive rear end, uh, but it still looks OE as the flare continues into it with that line. Yeah, it lines up perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right, so now we're on the rear section, which is the rear everyone else sees because, you know, this guy's speed, speed racer. That's cute. <laughs> Not even. We're, we're going to go from top to bottom. It's because everything here is pretty much not the way it was when he got the car. So if you can please explain. Uh, so this is a this is not an STI wing. Like I said, this is WRX. So uh, this is, well, I guess to clarify, the base of it is a 2007 STI wing. Uh, the upper half of this wing is called a Sims wing. It's a, a JDM wing. Um, and it's cool because these holes uh, are so that you can adjust the blade. They angle the blade for more downforce or less drag. Uh, I made this uh, gurney flap from an E46, E46 M3 trunk spoiler uh, and I heated that to conform to the shape of this blade because there's no gurney flap for this wing because the wing is already so rare. Um, I really uh, appreciate aero and I, and I would say I actually felt the difference in downforce in, uh, once I installed this on the car. Um, so then this is a 2007 SCI trunk I had to swap to for the Sims wing. Um, I debadged it, but then I added the uh, Zero Sports uh, logo or badge here, uh, and I, it was really hard to find this Zero Sport badging. Uh, I'm in a rare parts group on Facebook that has really cool parts where I could find all these little tidbits. That also includes, from that page, I found these Zero Sports license uh -huh. plate bolts. Um, and people don't even notice these, these but uh, these are bolts that say Zero Sports. Um, and I was super stoked to find that and actually run that. Uh, then I have the uh, authentic Voltex diffuser. I had that custom mounted to the Zero Sports bumper. So I had to fab uh, brackets to mount it to this. Um, it's the only authentic Zero Sports and Voltex diffuser stack setup I know of uh, in existence today. Um, and I, I love that they look like they were intended to go together and were intended to be ran together. Um, I'm also thankful that my car is black because it uh, kind of blends in how aggressive this diffuser is as well. Did These, you fabricate it yourself? Uh, the, uh, the what? To, to fit the diffuser onto the bumper? Uh, yeah, we made brackets wow. in order to uh, go into the bumper. Um, and he's actually going to the uh, floor of the car. Um, so yeah, it's actually very sturdy. You can see there's you know barely any movement, um, so it provides its max aero effect. Um, this is the uh, Oz, uh, the Beat Rush um, Beat Rush tow hook. Uh, I painted that red, uh, and then lastly these are the uh, Illumistatic uh, LED Angel Wing tail lights. Uh, they look really cool. I guess they're M5 inspired. Uh, so when I brake, this lights up, and so do the wings. Uh, the reverse as well as the, the turn signals are sequential LED. Oh, I mean, well, the turn signal is sequential, uh, so it'll be animating right uh, and left whenever I turn that on. Uh, reverse lights uh, then fully light up in a bright white. Since we're back here, what exhaust is that? Uh, this is the, uh, it's a cool exhaust. It's the, uh, this is actually another OEM, I guess, catalog part. It's called the uh, STI Genome Exhaust. Um, there's a JDM and USDM uh, option for both. Mm -hmm. I have the USDM one, so it doesn't have the logos on the side. Oh. But uh, this is one of my favorite exhausts in existence because it's super subtle when I'm not on it. It's very quiet. Uh, but when I'm on it, it just sounds super crazy. It just sounds so aggressive. Um, so, you know, with how old I am now, I'm, I'm glad that I don't have a super crazy loud exhaust. Uh, I like that it's loud when I want it to be and not when I don't want it to be. Mm -hmm. That's made it to uh, actually a stock mid pipe and then, a, then that's made it to a PDE down pipe. Uh, 4.5 inch bell mouth catless downpipe. Um, and the car has uh, external wastegates uh, uppipe as well. Very elaborate exhaust setup. Everyone else just goes, you know, sh straight NVIDIA or something. His is all very unique, rare parts that I don't think most people have heard of, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's a, it, it, that combination has resulted in a very unique sound. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a sound that I've heard on, on, on any other Subaru, to be honest. I hear a lot of Subarus with very heavy bass and it just sounds very generic. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that mine sounds like a very clean boxer rumble and you can really hear that boxer rumble. Cool. Let's move on to the engine. 
So I know everyone wants to know, what are your horsepower numbers before we get in depth into uh, your... They're actually super modest. Uh, again, this car was built purely for uh, e equilibrium of uh, uh, handling and power um, and usable power on the street, toge, and tracks here in SoCal. So it's making 300, about 310 wheel horse uh, and 330 wheel torque about. Uh, and this was uh, on the Yimmy Sport Dyno. The car was protuned by the uh, EJ guru, Paul Yang. Um, and he did a stellar job on this car. Uh, I, I test, I give it to him that this car has uh, lasted 15, 14 years wow. on the stock EJ255 motor, making over mo 100 more wheel horsepower and torque than stock uh, and not blown. So uh, this, this motor has been contrary to all the memes that exist about uh, you know, EJ's blowing and throwing rods. Uh, I've been tracking and canning it, driving it hard every day that I drive it uh, and I've had no problems. Okay, cool. Let's start talk to bottom. Cusco? Uh, so Cusco. yeah, I have a Cusco uh, front strut bar. Uh, mm -hmm. th this piece is something that I wasn't going to buy because I thought it wouldn't be effective, but because uh, it's so close to the firewall. But mm -hmm. when I installed this piece, it actually drastically improved the rigidity of the car, which is something that I'm really striving to improve. Uh, to, I want the whole car to be as rigid as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I really enjoy this mod. Um, I have a Cusco brakes, master cylinder brace. Uh, I have the Zero Sports uh, duct so that it can duct air to the full volume of the Tomahawk intercooler. I gotta replace this uh, intercooler with a GR USDM STI mm -hmm. intercooler that I already have. So That'll fill out to. this gap here because yeah. this was made for that. I was just testing to see if this would uh, be effective and improve performance uh, in general. Uh, I'll heat wrap that one gold. Um, then I have a VF39 that was poured and polished, uh, so I upgraded this car to a VF39. Mm -hmm. um, the car is extremely responsive. Uh, I attribute to the port and polish I did on the intercooler turbo as well as the uh, external wastegate. I have a Grim Speed up pipe external wastegate 44 millimeter teal V band setup uh, that combined uh, with the Pro Drive cold air intake, which is actually uh, carb legal. It has the carb decal on it, which is a big deal in the Subaru world. Mm -hmm. um, Koyo. Radiator, uh, Zero Sports upper and lower radiator piping, the Cusco cooling plates. I have a Zero Sports cooling plate at home uh, that I can swap to, um, but I like the, uh, the blue theme yeah. going on here. Zero Sports cap with the ARC cap, uh, Zero Sports tie, uh, Cusco tie down, um, and basically all the basic supporting mods. Uh, that also includes the Grim Speed uh, EBCS, as well as the uh, Wabro 255 to be able to run uh, the V39 on the EJ255. Uh, and it's very reliable at 17 PSI. Uh, I make max boost at like 2800 RPM, 2900. The car is a spool monster, torque monster to me. Uh, and it's very usable in the toges here and tracks here. And that's what I love. Yeah. All right, so now we're in the interior and Andy's gonna point out all the little mods inside. Uh, so the interior was uh, sponsored by uh, my friend uh, Aaron. Uh, he runs Suede It. Uh, so the center console or dash is all uh, suede, uh, black suede, to, as a reference to the S204 in Japan. Uh, the door cards are blue suede. They're not uh, STI door cards, but they are a reference to the USDM STI blue door cards. Um, this is a, I swapped out the wheel for a STI wheel that was Alcantara wrapped with the red stitching and yellow race stripe. Uh, the cluster is a Pro Drive cluster that's uh, navy blue. Um, I love that it lights up green to actually match uh, all the green HVAC lighting. Uh, the HVAC lighting is uh, surrounded by uh, WC Lathwork TI accents. So is this. This is a WC Lathwork shift arm. I love this shift arm because it has a heavy weight, a lot of mass, uh, and actually drastically changed the shifting feel. Uh, shifting feel was also improved with the uh, Cart Boy uh, short shifter and bushings. Uh, I made some carbon deletes for, or carbon wrap deletes for the DCCD button, buttons that aren't here. Uh, I have a, uh, the three ATI 3 pod uh, that replaces the OEM uh, clock pod. Uh, so now I can't tell time here. Um, I guess I have time on my Pioneer uh, doubled in. Uh, but uh, I have um, the three DEFI uh, gauges in the ATI pod. Uh, I have Recaro uh, shift boot, Recaro uh, wrapped uh, center console, and I have these uh, really cool Zero Sports um, coasters that uh, sit under your drinks um, when you have them in the cup holder. Uh, the seats are uh, Recaro Speed, Recaro SRD Zero, which is a really rare, uh, really old 
uh, Recaro that's leather and confetti center. Um, I love that it's a throwback with that confetti center. And I want my passengers to be more comfortable than uh, I am. You know, they can chill out with the leather and I'm just straight business in the Recaro speed. This is the uh, JDM Red hazard button. Uh, this is the, uh, I really like this Zero Sports badge that I found. Uh, it's a testament to like the Cadillacs that have uh, Cadillac and cursive on the dash. So uh, this is a pure correct, uh, authentic, really rare uh, badge I found, uh, and I had that in mind when I put that there. Um, this is a Cusco uh, six-point cage with the uh, carbon add-on bars, two of them in a cross. Uh, I mount my GoPro there too, uh, so I guess they serve as a expensive GoPro mount. Um, <laughs> I have a Beat Rush, Beat Rush uh, rear seat delete. Um, uh, I delete the seats. I have the red Oswald uh, brace. It's a triangle brace that actually is one of the best mods I've ever done to this car. It immediately tightened up the rear end and made it seem like the rear no longer follows the front when I turn. Now the car feels one and it seems to be in unison when I turn. Everything is in one motion and I love that piece. Uh, I had it TIG welded so that it would uh, connect to two lower uh, seat mounting positions over the regular piece um, and I painted I painted that red myself and uh, STI uh, uh, floor mats with the fire extinguisher down here uh, and this is a uh, uh, really rare good condition I got very lucky finding this condition STI door sills um, and then of course I, I gotta top everything off with the uh, STI uh, uh, hand wet hand cloths that I'll never <laughs> use um, and yeah, I think that wraps it up for the interior. So I see you don't have the original brakes that came on this car. Yeah, these are the uh, 04 STI Brembos. Um, it made it a lot easier since the 04 STI is 5x100 and so am I. Uh, I had that uh, powder coated candy apple red with three stage flake. So it has a lot of flake in the sun. Um, I'm running DBA 4000 slotted rotors, uh, which are amazing. Uh, I'm running a, a Motul fluid. Uh, with the uh, stop, stop tap lines, stainless steel braid lines, as well as um, Project Mew pads that I'll swap between that and stop tech pads as well. Um, they both are pretty great pads to me, um, and I enjoy uh, using both. And then since you like fitment so much, what suspension are you currently on? Oh, uh, so I'm on a BC Coils. Uh, I've had that forever. Uh, somehow they don't seem to be blown. Um, the car, uh, maybe one day we'll be on KWs or Olins, uh, if and when that happens. Um, I've worked really hard on the fitment on this car because uh, the GD chassis is a uh, pain in the ass for fitment. Although it has these wide bulging fenders, it uh, is actually uh, doesn't fit much. So I've had to spend a lot of work uh, rolling, pulling, uh, my fenders. So the front fenders are uh, rolled and pulled. The rear is rolled, uh, pulled, uh, cut and trimmed. Wow. Um, so I have no rub now when it's just me. Um, but uh, if I have a passenger, uh, that may induce a little bit more rub. Um, I relocated my wiring harness above the metal lip that's here, so I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that anymore. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with where it's at now. Nice. So other than the coils you mentioned, what other suspension components do you have? Uh, so I have the uh, Cusco front strut bar, uh, the Oswald uh, triangle brace, like I said. Um, so underneath the car would be uh, front and rear Cusco sway bars, uh, Helix and Cusco end links for the sway bars. Um, I'm sorry, it was Helix and Cobb end links for the sway bars. I have uh, all the Cusco bracing I could find throughout the car uh, underneath. Um, I have a uh, group end uh, transmission mount. Uh, I have uh, all the all the bushings uh, that I could find for the drivetrain, the suspension, because um, you know, for me, everything about this car was about uh, making it more rigid, more stiff, more firm. Because in the end, this car is an Econo box uh, chassis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, four door uh, Econo box. So you know, I now the car is so firm, so rigid, tight in every way, and uh, that's what I love. So I have a, a Perrin anti-lift kit. Uh, I have the uh, white line uh, roll center adjustment kit because the car is so much lower than it was stock. Uh, so that uh, helps improve the geometry of the car for handling at this height. And I also have a uh, rear lockdown subframe bolts from Cartboy. Uh, I have the, um, uh, the steering bushings uh, and steering rack. Um, and yeah, at this point, uh, I'm, I would say, to be honest, the car handles 
you know, up really well. It just feels like it's on rails. Uh, it, has, I, it has infinite grip, it feels like. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I love how much the downforce uh, works with the grip to just feel like it's a go-kart on rails, even though it's still a four-door uh, heavy, heavier, larger car. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also something that's not seen is the car has the uh, carbon fiber, uh, a carbon fiber drive, drive shaft, shaft shop drive shaft. Uh, so that actually made the uh, throttle more responsive. It, uh, uh, and helps the car put down more wheel horsepower down to the actual ground. Um, and that's something that I really, uh, really enjoyed. I really like these type of uh, driver type of feeling mods that improve the true driver's experience. And you still have a mod list waiting to add on to it, or is this pretty much done now since you also have the E46 M3 now? Uh, so in terms of, I guess, mods that I'd want to do, I mean, I would really love to do a, a Spexy uh, roof event, but I can't because of the uh, roll cage. I'd have to uninstall it. And uh, I've already done that. I've installed it and uninstalled it, and it's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> so that literally is the only thing keeping me from buying that Spexy roof vent kit. Uh, okay. Otherwise, um, to be honest, I'm actually extremely happy with the state that it's in now. I, I just strive to just maintain it, enjoy it as much as I can for what it is. But I know at some point in its future, since I plan to keep this, it's a lifelong build. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, you know, if and when the motor or transmission goes, because it's still, it's a WRX with a five speed, uh, what they call the glass five speed. Yeah, right. uh, so that five speed plus the uh, WRX EJ255 motor, um, if and when those go, then I would definitely Upgrade. basically uh, build a motor, uh, the obligatory built motor, uh, bigger turbo, uh, and then also uh, if the transmission went, then I go, of course, the obligatory six-speed, differential, DCCD, everything associated with the six-speed. All right, so that's the sum of Andy's car. If you guys like that, you can follow his Instagram. We're going to put it on screen or in the description. And if you guys want to drop a like and follow our channel, we're actually going to review his E46 M3 in the future as well. So thank you, Andy, for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. See you guys next time. Take care.